Well, there's an old axiom, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's not broken between the walleye and the red ones. As we welcome in Matt Melzak, the voice of this little walleye. Matt, thank you so much for coming in. Always a pleasure, Mark. Looking forward to it. Alluding to the announcement earlier on Monday that the walleye have extended their agreement with Grand Rapids and the Detroit Red Wings to continue as the Red Wings affiliate for three more years. Yeah, pretty, I mean, it's something that, yeah, you just said it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing, but yes. It's something that has been kind of ingrained in Toledo hockey for a long time, going back to ECHL days. It's been very rare. You'd have to really dig for times when D Toledo and Detroit were not connected uh, at some point. So especially in the walleye days, since the Toledo walleye started in 2009 until now, they have had the Red Wings as an affiliate. Remember, they did have Chicago yep. for a few years at the early onset of the Toledo walleye. but. They have been a Detroit mainstay and will continue to be now for another three years. It's exciting news for sure. It makes sense, and it's good to see that Steve Eisman and the Detroit Red Wings see the value of keeping this relationship going. And, and as we've seen, especially on the goaltending side, they are, they are very bullish on getting their young goaltenders here to work and get better. We saw that with Sebastian Kosa, and he continues to get better now in the American Hockey League that year last year in Toledo certainly benefited a young goaltender, even though a first round pick, oh, you can't put a first round pick down in the ECHL. They did it because they knew it would help him develop and be a better goaltender going forward. And it certainly has showcased itself as Grand Rapids has started to play a lot better uh, in the AHL and, and Sebastian Coase is getting a lot of time up there. On the ice, what a difference a third period makes. As Toledo, they won on Wednesday and then they lost Friday, they lost Saturday. Sunday, they were down in the third period, did not look good, and all of a sudden that line of Sawchuk, Doucette, and Lewandowski come up big. Yeah, and you're talking about two or three of those guys are down from the pipeline. So we were just talking about that. We'll tie it back in with Riley Sawchuk and Alexander Doucette, both young players, both getting an opportunity to really get some playing time and some big minutes in Toledo, and they came through. Uh, Riley Sawchuk has been really playing well. Uh, great plays as well by Alexander Doucette. Mitch Lewandowski has been, uh, you know, a star all year, uh, kind of unheralded. Uh, doesn't get a lot of talk, but boy, is he a good player. And you watch him go. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Coach Mickish said to us on our Ice Check show this past week that he was the guy that has surprised him the most, but certainly in a positive way to see how good he has been. So, yeah, that line when Toledo needed a jump and a spark, they got it from that group. So they beat Indy twice, but they lose to Kalamazoo twice. And for whatever reason, the K-Wings have had the walleye number this year. You know, it's weird, Mark. I have done this a long time, and you see so many times. It's just weird to see there's always that one team that you struggle with. For whatever reason it is, and I don't even know if it's struggling, because Toledo's still averaging well in the upper 30s in shots per game against Kalamazoo. It's not like they're struggling to really generate a ton of offense. Maybe a bit this weekend. Uh, but, you know, in, in a game's prior, they've had 40 shots a game, and, you know, we're struggling to score goals against Kalamazoo. Some of it is their goaltending. Some of it's the way Kalamazoo plays. They play a lot of closer, tighter games, and we've seen that. Not, it's not like these are games where they're way out of hand, and it, every game is 6-2 in favor of Kalamazoo. That's not the case. I mean, you look at this weekend, one shot separated the teams uh, both nights. So it's not like this is way out of, uh, you know, that the, they can't beat Kalamazoo or they won't uh, going forward. Just right now, it, it, they've had the number, and it's amazing because Kalamazoo struggles against teams like Fort Wayne. Toledo's had no trouble with Fort Wayne. It's just weird how sometimes those things work out. Absolutely. Second half of the season is here, so we're going to start paying closer attention to possible playoff matchups. Always match up well in that Melzick in the studio. Matt, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it, Mark. Thank you.